The MLB offseason has come and gone, and now it's time to give out some offseason grades for every single team in baseball. We're going to find out which teams had the best offseason and which team had the worst. Looking at you, Colorado, you should be embarrassed. Here's a virtual hug if you're a Rockies fan. Here you go. But without further ado, let's give an offseason grade to every single team in baseball. We're going to start off with the Atlanta Braves because they didn't have a crazy offseason, but they still somehow got better despite the fact that they won 104 games just last year. I've always been a massive fan of Chris Sale, and I do think that Jared Kelnick has a high ceiling. Uh, just don't look at his spring training stats. Ronaldo Lopez is going to be their number five starter over Bryce Elder, so that's a big time addition. If Ken Giles gets healthy, maybe he makes the bullpen later on in the year. So the fact that they only really lost out on a Kyle Wright, a Michael Soroka, by the way, Soroka looks really good for the White Sox, but again, it's spring. Take it with a grain of salt. I'm going to give the Atlanta Braves a B for their 2023-2024 offseason. There's a reason why I'm not a teacher, and that's because I think I would be way too nice to my students and I would never give out Fs, but the Miami Marlins, they might deserve an F, but I'll give them a D minus just to be nice. They went 84 and 78 last year. That's good for a third place finish in the East. So me, I'm thinking they're going to get better over the off season. Not really. They lost out on Jorge Soler and David Robertson. David Robertson was awful for them. So maybe that's addition by subtraction. But when you only bring in Tim Anderson, Christian Bethencourt, Videl Brujan, and a few other guys like Nick Gordon, I'm not impressed. I'm sorry. The Mets are one of the harder teams to grade in all of baseball because it's supposed to be a bridge year, but also on paper, they're not that bad. They added Jay. JD Martinez to one of the better lineups already in the NL, so they have a one through seven that is pretty deep. Say what you want about Harrison Bader, Joey Wendell, but they are veteran guys who have had success in the past. Shamanaya was really good to end 2023 because he developed a sweeper. Luis Sabrina, once upon a time, was one of the better pitchers in baseball. So if they can capture some lightning in the bottle, I know they lost out on a Luis Guillorme, Daniel Vogelback, Carrasco, Tim LaCastro, but those guys didn't really amount to much in 2023. So for me, I'm giving the Mets a C. A C plus. Let's give them a C plus. I'm not going to give them a B minus because they did not get a Pete Alonso extension done and that's their fault. It's not mine. Speaking of extensions, the Phillies got their extension done with Zach Wheeler. So I'm going to give them a big time bonus for that. They brought back Aaron Nola. They brought in Whit Merrifield. So hopefully he's going to play better defense in the outfield if Brandon Marsh needs a day off or Johan Rojas or maybe Bryson Stott. There's a platoon situation even though Stott rakes against lefties. I'm also a big fan of Spencer Turnbull, someone who's thrown a no hitter in MLB. Yeah, they lost out on Reese Hoskins and Craig Kimbrell, but they didn't get worse, which is good. I'm going to give them a B. I know I gave the Mets an excuse because it's a bridge year, but they try on a year to year basis. The Nationals, they don't really do that. Now, to their credit, they have gotten better over the last few years. That Juan Soto trade looks to be pretty good because James Wood and Robert Hassel, they might be him. In terms of what they did to improve, they picked up Joey Gallo, Nick Senzel, Eddie Rosario, Dylan Floro. They're not showing Jesse Winker. There are some pieces that do have high ceilings. I just don't really know if I believe in them anymore. Which which sucks to say. They didn't really lose a lot of talent. Dominic Smith, he was good for the Mets back in the day during that shortened season. Aside from that, not really much happening this offseason for the Nationals. I'm going to give them a D plus. Let's talk about the Chicago Cubs now. They brought back Cody Bellinger. They brought in Shota Imanaga, who has been a strikeout machine in spring training. Again, take it with a grain of salt, but that is good news for the future. Hector Neris, Michael Bush, Yancy Almonte, David Peralta, some decent pieces, but there was no Otani. There was no big splash. So can we give them anything better than a B- minus to me I don't think so. I'm going to give their division rival, the Reds, the exact same grade A, B minus, because when you look at their pickups, sure, you can factor in a guy like Frankie Montas, Jamie Candelario, who came from the last thing that we talked about, the Cubs. Nick Martinez is a good depth piece for that rotation. Maybe he ends up as a long reliever, now staying with relievers. They picked up Brent Sutter, Suter, however you say his last name. They also brought in Emilio Pagan for that bullpen, Austin wins as a backup catcher. And also, we got to bring up the fact that they traded for Santiago Espinal because half of their starting lineup has either been suspended or they're injured now. Did the Cubs and the Reds get better? Sure. Did they get a lot better? No. I'm not going to lie to you guys. The Brewers grade was not looking all that great, but luckily for them, they gave Jackson Chorio a bunch of money and he deserves every penny. Jackson Chorio made some history. He is the youngest player since Andrew Jones and Ken Griffey Jr. to make an opening day roster as a center fielder. He's only 20 years old. The Brewers added guys like Reese Hoskins, Gary Sanchez, Eric Koss, so a couple veteran guys, but also some younger guys, and Joey Ortiz and D.L. Hall in the Corbin Burns trade. We can't forget that they traded away Corbin Burns. I just, uh, the Brewers get a C-plus from me. And I've talked to quite a few Brewers fans on social media. 
they're not very happy with this offseason either. The Pittsburgh Pirates are simply getting a C from me. They brought back Andrew McCutcheon. They gave an extension to Mitch Keller. I don't know if that's a good thing considering Mitch Keller. He is hit and miss. Seems like every other start. I do like Mitch Keller. Don't get me wrong. But the other guys that they brought in, Marco Gonzalez in a trade. I mean, when you add Aroldis Chapman and Domingo Herman in the same offseason, I got some questions for you. They also brought in Rowdy Telez. They lost out on Vince Velasquez, Miguel Andujar. No one really too notable. So they get a C and they're lucky at that. The St. Louis Cardinals are getting their grade boosted because they had one of the biggest addition by subtractions in all of baseball. Adam Wainwright finally retired. Batting practice Wainwright, that's what he was to end his career. He's finally off the team. And they replaced him with Sonny Gray. They also brought in a Keenan Middleton. Kyle Gibson doesn't wow me. Neither does Lance Lynn, Brandon Crawford, or Matt Carpenter. But hey, it's a feel-good story happening down in St. Louis, right? A bunch of old guys who used to be on the squad. Maybe they can have a renaissance here. I do really like the Sonny Gray addition on top of the fact that they added Kittredge and Middleton to the bullpen, so some pretty good depth pieces. But then, of course, if you're a Cardinals fan, I'm sorry. Sonny Gray, he gets injured. He's probably missing a few weeks. That hurts, but I'm still going to give them a B- minus because Sonny Gray is really good. And if you're a Cardinals fan, you're probably going to say, Fuzzy, you're way too nice for my squad. They deserve a C plus or maybe even just a C. The Diamondbacks shocked the world and made it to the World Series last year after going 84 and 78. So it was very much a Cinderella story. They made it and they got even better in the offseason. They're replacing Evan Longoria with Eugenio Suarez. I love Longo, but he's not been very good the last few years. Erod has shown flashes of being an all-star type level starting pitcher. Jock Peterson is going to be a platoon guy with Randall Gritchick. They brought back Lourdes Gurriel Jr. Something that this list doesn't really include is extensions or re-signs, so keep that in mind. Randall Gritchick destroys lefties. Jock Peterson does the same against righties. Suarez is better than Longo at this stage of their careers, and Erod is a fantastic addition to the rotation. You're getting an A from me, Arizona. That's so sick that I can't even say that. Good job. If you're a Rockies fan, I just want to say I'm so sorry. Now, on my script right now, I have them at an F minus. I'm going to give them a flat F because they just gave Ezekiel Tovar an extension. So I'm happy I delayed this video. Otherwise, an F minus would be the worst grade of the entire video, I think. Let me look. I think it is. You're telling me that Cal Quantrill, Dakota Hudson, Jalen Beeks, Jacob Stallings, and a few other guys that I just don't really care about are going to make a difference? No, they're not. What are we doing down in Colorado? A couple years ago, people were calling me out because I said that Chris Bryant to the Rockies makes absolutely no sense. And people were saying, hey, Fuzzy, I thought you wanted parity and variety in baseball. This is good for that. Well, I think it's good when a team actually has a plan ahead of them. The Rockies threw a ton of money in front of Chris Bryant with no plan in front of him. And now he's basically saying he regrets signing with them. F minus. The Los Angeles Dodgers obviously are getting an A plus plus. I am giving them two pluses, not just one, A++, because when you can bring in, I almost have to kind of catch my breath before I say all of these names. Shohei Otani, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, Teoscar Hernandez, Tyler Glasnow, James Paxton. I mean, they got so much better despite the fact that they won 100 games. They brought back Clayton Kershaw, Enrique Hernandez, Jason Hayward, Joe Kelly. They also got Trey Sweeney in a trade with the Yankees. He's got a high ceiling as well. I don't know when he's going to show up and produce, but maybe it's for a couple games throughout the season. Who knows? Does it suck to lose out on a J.D. Martinez and an up-and-coming star, in my opinion, and Ryan Pepio? Yeah, that's not fun, but they have so many pieces, it doesn't matter. So the Padres obviously gave away Juan Soto, and in return, they got a Michael King, Kyle Higashioka, Johnny Brito, Drew Thorpe. Scratch that Drew Thorpe. He's already traded. Who did Drew Thorpe get traded for? The man himself, Dylan Cece, came on over from the White Sox. They stole him right from under Yankees fans. Obviously, Garrett Cole's dealing with whatever he's going through, so Dylan Cease would have been a great addition. Nope. The Padres said, gimme. Dylan Cease and Michael King are big time ads to that rotation. Michael King was insane last year. The Padres are getting a B minus from me. It was a C plus because I don't believe that what they got in return for Juan Soto matches what they lost. But because they added Dylan Cease, that does boost up their grade to a B minus. I mean, we haven't even talked about guys like Josh Hader, Blake Snell, Nick Martinez, Michael Walker, Seth Lugo. So yes, they did lose a lot of pieces, but I still like the Padres on paper. And they did have a decent offseason with all things considered because they are saving a lot of money going into 2024 and 2025. Am I really going to do it? Am I going to give the Giants an A plus? I think I might. Blake Snell, Jung Ho Lee, the grandson of the win. 
Jorge Soler, Matt Chapman. We're not done yet. Jordan Hicks. I don't know if Jordan Hicks is going to be in the rotation now because they picked up a Blake Snell. And also Robbie Ray will be back towards the second half of the season. So maybe Jordan Hicks will go back to the bullpen then. I'm giving them an A+. This was a crazy offseason for the Giants. And it kind of came late because they weren't doing anything in the first half of the offseason. And then Christmas came early for Giants fans. They got a ton of help in Snell, Lee, Soler, Chapman. There's a lot of good guys on that team now. Shout out to the NL West because the Diamondbacks got an A for me, the Giants got an A+, and the Dodgers got an A++. You might be shocked that I'm only giving the Baltimore Orioles a B, but... That's what I'm giving them, a B. We don't have a Corbin Burns extension. Yeah, Craig Kimbrell is a nice add to the bullpen. Aside from that, I mean, they didn't even call up Jackson Holiday for opening day. Orioles fans are saying that it makes sense because Jackson Holiday might be on the wrong side of a platoon. The Orioles are very left-handed dominant, so they're not ready yet. Did they get better? 100%. Adding Corbin Burns is a huge add, but when you... Think about the other guys in that rotation, a Kyle Bradish and other guys who have now gotten injured. It's not enough. They never spend money, and it really, really makes me mad. For the Boston Red Sox, I actually have a surprise guest, my editor, Pesky Talk. Make sure you guys subscribe to him because he's an absolute lifesaver, and he's got a pretty fun channel as well. The Boston Red Sox went into the offseason promising full throttle, and, well, that didn't happen. After losing James Paxton and Corey Kluber in free agency, they needed two starting pitchers going into the season. They signed one, but then traded one away, and the one that they signed is now out for the season already. So, out of the two starting pitchers that they needed, they got negative one. They did add Liam Hendricks, Vaughn Grisham, Tyler O'Neill, and Greg Weiser, but they also lost Justin Turner, Alex Verdugo, and John Schreiber. The biggest thing that they did this offseason was extend their young pitcher, Brian Bayo, though, to a seven-year extension, which was their best move easily, but with all that being said, they're only getting a C-. minus. It wasn't good enough for full throttle. I'm gonna do it. I'm going to do it. The Yankees are getting an A+. Plus. The Yankees got better across the board. Do not tell me that getting Soto, Verdugo, Stroman, Grisham, Ferguson, and Gonzalez doesn't make them better. Sevy was awful for them last year. Michael King is a tough loss. I will not lie. Peralta, he was already replaced by Ferguson and Gonzalez. Kalagashioka, meh. IKF, meh. They're still going to get an A. Actually, you know, I'm kind of thinking about it one more time. I'm actually going to knock the Yankees down to an A because we do not have a Juan Soto extension. I held that against the Mets for not signing Pete Alonso, so we're going to do the same thing. The Yankees, good for them. They got Juan Soto and a couple other pretty good pieces. No extension, no A+. The Tampa Bay Rays did what the Rays always did. They don't get better by signing big-time free agents or anything like that. They work in the shadows, so in terms of their offseason, I can't give them a high grade, but they're probably going to be really, really good all over again. I mean, they were 36 games above 500 last year. They traded away Tyler Glasnow, Luke Rayleigh. I don't like those trades all that much and also they lost out on Robert Stevenson one of the better relief pitchers to end last season a D plus is that fair love me some Ryan Pepio he's gonna be really really good but he's not Tyler Glass now. And Jose Caballero coming over from the Mariners, he's decent as well. I like Richie Palacios. Maybe he breaks out. Ahmed Rosario, he might have 70 home runs and 80 stolen bases now that the Rays are about to fix him and use their voodoo magic on him. The Toronto Blue Jays added Joey Votto, so that brings a lot of vibes to the table. They also brought back Kevin Kiermeyer. They brought in Daniel Vogel back, IKF, Justin Turner. The guy from the WBC, Yariel Rodriguez, he could be sneaky good as well, but they lost out on Matt Chapman, Jordan Hicks, Hungjin Ryu said, I'm going back to where I came from. A lot of departures, but also a lot of nice additions. It's just they didn't get Shohei Otani. And the flight of Otani really made me think that he was going to be a Blue Jay. It didn't happen. Maybe I'm baking that into my decision to give the Jays a C. But I've been talking to Jays fans. They would probably agree. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give the Chicago White Sox an F. And my God, it seems like they signed everyone and their mom. There's not really one single person on this list, aside from Soroka that I'm excited about, Eric Fetty, he was decent when he went overseas, but he's never really been that good. Paul DeYoung has been raking in spring. I just don't have a lot of faith in a lot of these guys. Tim Anderson is gone. Dylan Cease is gone. Hendricks, Clevenger, some guys that have been very productive over the last few years. They've just said peace out. And considering the White Sox won 61 games last year, they're going to be even worse this year. They're getting an F. Oh, we have another F coming up. I am just so sick of teams like the A's, the Rays, my team, the Guardians. I'm giving the Guardians an F. 
Esteban Florio, Carlos Carrasco, Scott Barlow, Austin Hedges. You brought back Austin Hedges. Maybe he's a good vibes guy and he just won a championship with the Rangers and he's a good framer and stuff like that. But don't give him $5 million, you donut. Love the fact that Carlos Carrasco, Cookie, is back on the squad. Esteban Florio is basically Babe Ruth in the minors. But when it comes to the big leagues, he's Miles Straw. Speaking of Miles Straw, we cleared him on waivers and no one picked him up. So now he's back with us. Fantastic. I really want to give the Tigers more than a B, I just don't know if I can do it because I love extensions and they did give a pretty decent extension to Colt Keith. He has a lot of promise. They brought in Kenta Maeda for that rotation. They brought in Mark Canna. Akil Badu has been optioned. We don't know if the bad man is done in the Tiger system, but it kind of looks like it is because Parker Meadows is pretty good and there's no room for Akil Badu. Jack Flaherty looks better in spring. Gio Rochelle is nice. Shelby Miller was fixed by the Dodgers because of course they fixed an aging former stud and uh, yeah. I'm giving the Tigers a B. They could shock some people. They could be the Diamondbacks of this year. As a Guardians fan, I'm happy to say this next sentence. The Kansas City Royals are getting an A grade from me. They deserve it. They secured their face of the franchise until I'm almost 40 years old. Bobby Wood Jr. got a fat bag. I hate the fact that Michael Walker was brought in and now in his final start before the season started, he suffered a finger contusion because he got hit by a Salvador Perez line drive. Hopefully he's healthy. They brought in Seth Lugo. That's a really nice addition to Michael Walker. And when you combine that with the Cole Reagans from last year, I mean, they're having a pretty good last few months in terms of adding talent. Adam Frazier is a decent depth piece. Same with Hunter Renfro. They also brought in the reliever, Will Smith, who has won three consecutive World Series in a row. So the Royals put all of your money on them because Will Smith is about to win four championships in a row. Don't discount the fact that they also picked up Nick Anderson and Cal Wright. They were really good a few years ago. I'll also kind of give a shout out to Garrett Hampson. He was, uh, he was sneaky good for the Marlins last year. So the Royals, A. The Minnesota Twins are getting a big old fat, oh, before I say that next sentence, I am grading their offseason a D. Yeah, that's a better way to word it. Carlos Santana, fine. Josh DeMont, Manuel Margot. I mean, who did they really add of substance or sus? Substance? Those are both individual words, substance and sustenance, but I'm looking at them. Anthony Desclafani, I think that's how you say it. I'm probably botching it. They lost that on Sonny Gray. Kenta Maeda wasn't very good. Jorge Polanco is now gone. Thank you, baby Jesus, because he always torched the Guardians. Joey Gallo is gone as well. Nick Gordon. Tyler Maley is officially gone. He's on the Rangers, I believe. The Twins did not get better. They did not. So I'll just go ahead and say it. The Twins get a D, comma, from me. A D, comma, from me. Don't, don't get it twisted. The Astros are kind of in the same boat as the Braves where we didn't really expect them to get a whole lot better. But when you can get Jose Altuve to sign an extension that's very team friendly and you bring in a Josh Hader, you're going to have to face Brian Abreu, Ryan Presley, and Josh Hader in the 7th, 8th, and ninth innings. That's absolutely terrifying. That is disgusting. When you don't have a lot of flaws in your team already, but you still go out and get a Josh Hader, the best free agent reliever, gotta tip your cap. Then again, Michael Brantley retired, and they lost Neris and Maytom. Maybe that brings them down a few ticks. What do you guys think of the Astros? Did I get this wrong or right, giving them a B minus? Ah, <sighs> the Angels. The Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. The Angels of Angels. I think that's what it is in Spanish. Why is it not the Anaheim Angels? Anyways, Robert Stevenson, a very nice addition to that bullpen. Matt Moore is back in that bullpen as well. Love Jose Cisneros, Adam Simber, Adam Kolarek. The bullpen has been completely revamped down in Anaheim. Obviously, the elephant in the room, Shohei Otani. Um, yeah, yeah, he's not with the squad anymore, so that's a big-time grade ruiner. With all things considered, um, C is a C fair, just a straight C for the Angels. Is that right? Aaron Hicks is going to be a lefty destroyer, so he's going to help out if Mickey Moniak needs a day off against a tough lefty. Joe Adele has looked better in spring, but then again, he's not an addition, so I can't use that to bump up their grade. They went 73 and 89. They'll probably win... I'm not even going to guess it because I always get the Angels wrong. The A's are so lucky that the Giants are jerks and they screwed over J.D. Davis because bringing in J.D. Davis helps them go from an F. That was their original grade. I'm going to give them an F plus now. There's just a lot of old guys on that team now just going to eat innings. They're basically bringing a bunch of Jordan Lyles to help right the ship and just get them through 2024 and on their road to Las Vegas. Which, by the way, you guys know I'm from Vegas. I still wish that the A's would have stayed in Oakland, build that stadium on the water, and give Vegas an experience 
expansion team, but of course that's not gonna happen and that sucks. Just like the Blue Jays, I feel like I'm kind of holding that against the Mariners for not getting a Shohei Otani because he was right there for the taking. I mean, they got Ichiro. I heard rumors that Otani almost went to the Mariners before he went to the Angels, so not getting him the second time that he was available, it's just a big punch to the gut. I do like who they added, do not get me wrong. They brought in two Mitches, Mitch Garver, and they brought back a former fan favorite, Mitch Hanniger. Jorge Polanco rakes, Luke Rayleigh is better than Kelnick, at least at this moment in time. Gregory Santos is really nice for that bullpen. They did lose quite a lot of talent though. As I'm recording, I literally just got an alert that Brian Wu, he's gonna be missing some time with some inflammation. Luckily for Mariners fans, their rotation is absolutely stacked and Emerson Hancock is gonna come in and fill in that void. He's decent, he once was a top prospect, but he's not been very good as a big leaguer. Let's just give the Mariners a B. I feel like that's fair. But the Rangers just won a World Series. They're calling up Wyatt Langford. They're gonna get Scherzer and DeGrom back in the second half. All they really have to do is get some decent starts from an Andrew Heaney or a John Gray, and they will mash their way to win after win. And then in the second half, they'll get their studs back in the rotation. So it's not like they had to have an insane offseason, but I do have to be objective. Kirby Yates, David Robertson, Michael Lorenzen, Tyler Maley, that is decent in terms of pitching depth, but most of these guys are past their primes. I hate to say it, so I'm going to give the Rangers a C, but it's not like they needed an A-plus offseason to go back-to-back. -back. They could go back-to-back -back even without these guys. Let me know in the comments, do you agree or disagree with any of my opinions? I love feedback, but make sure it's constructive. I appreciate you guys watching until the end. If you did, leave a like and subscribe. Remember to use code FUZZY on SeatGeek and Underdog Fantasy, and check out my gaming channel, Fuzzy Gaming.